Hello and welcome to a second season in our kitchen garden. So this is my first video of 2022. So I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. And hopefully we get a good growing year this time round because the weather was a little bit unkind to us last season. And in fact, I don't really like the current weather at all. It's the middle of winter and it is pretty mild, at least down here in the south. Far too warm for this time of year, to be honest. Ideally, we'd have a winter that got cold, stayed cold until spring arrived and then, and then warmed up and that would be that. But these warm periods we get followed by cold, warm, cold, that really upsets the, the plants and, and that's what encourages stuff to run to seed prematurely or, or crazy things to happen with the fruit. So I was kind of hoping we get a proper winter this year. And I, I imagine there's cold still to come, but right now we've got an uncharacteristically warm period and, and I'm not that keen on that. But anyway, today I'm just getting on with some of the winter work. So I have had a nice long rest, which means that there's tons of stuff here that needs to be done to get the garden into reasonable shape before the spring madness is upon us. And then, then it's all sowing and transplanting and pricking out, potting up, and it's just manic. So I'm really a little bit behind with the winter work. And today I'm gonna to sort out my asparagus. So behind me, just here, is what an asparagus bed ought to look like in the middle of winter. So ideally, the top growth, the, the ferny top growth, as it browns off, that would be cut down in late autumn. The bed's given a nice mulch, and that's how they would sit until spring. And this one here looks just about perfect. Unfortunately, I only did that yesterday. So pretty late, and, and that's not ideal. I should have cut all that down before winter, but I didn't get round to it. And today I'm going to tackle the, the larger one. So the one I'm gonna look at today, that was our original asparagus bed. It suffered a bit of a mishap when, when some young lad who was helping me in the garden, he was a bit too enthusiastic and weeded out the asparagus plants, which is a, a great pity because it takes a few years to get new ones established. But never mind, I planted some new crowns in the spring and yeah, most of them got reasonably well established. There are a couple of misses and the reason for that is that these crowns, well, they were imported and because of Brexit issues, they had to be brought in really early. So they went into the ground far too early. And in fact, I, I did store them for uh, a month or two, but as long as I could, but our conditions aren't perfect for storing the crown. So I, I kept them in, in sand and, and that's fine for a short period, but the crowns start to deteriorate bit by bit. And, and I think because of the timing, one or two of these crowns did not get established. And I've got a plan to sort that out. So let's go and take a look at the bed I'm going to work on today. That's our original bed. This one is one of our main veg beds that I've taken out of the rotation and turned over to asparagus. Not the most efficient use of space, but we've got plenty of space here. We, we grow as much veg as we could possibly want to eat here. So it, it doesn't matter that I've taken one of these and used it for asparagus. We really like the asparagus but I went a little bit nuts when I ordered the crowns and of course they wouldn't all fit in our old bed. So this is our main asparagus bed and here we've got 40 crowns. Um, I think each one of these bays can have 10 crowns and we've got a double row. Um, this is the old growth looking very sad now of course and I should have cut all of this down and there's a fair bit of weed in here. Um, not too bad on the small stuff, but in this part of the garden, historically, we've always had 
a little bit of nettle and, and bramble. I'm not sure if we've got any bramble in here, I hope not, but th there does appear to be a little bit of nettle. We've got to get all of that out. Um, got to be a little bit careful because I don't want to damage the crowns while we're weeding in here. But I need to cut these down, weed the bed out, and then give it a good covering of organic matter. Um, one thing I'm going to do first though, is pick a few berries. And this is potentially a little bit unusual. So asparagus is one of those plants where the male and the female are separate plants. And in the autumn, the female will produce some small orange-red berries. Now you very rarely see them in modern gardens. And the reason for that is that if you go and get your asparagus crowns from a, a garden centre or from one of the mainstream suppliers, in all likelihood, you're going to end up with an all-male hybrid variety. So all the modern production is based on all-male hybrids because those plants don't have to put energy into producing the fruit. That's one reason why they're considered potentially more productive. And of course, modern production is, is all about hybrid plants. Because of that, you're unlikely to see many cases where you've got the female plants, but I do because I'm a bit of a veg nerd and there are very good reasons for growing a modern variety of asparagus. They are really very productive and reliable, but I'm always interested in growing something a bit old or curious or generally open pollinated varieties that, that give me something slightly different. Um, but that's just me being nerdy. In this case, I've got two pretty old varieties of asparagus. In the bed I've already fixed up, that's a French variety. You'll have to forgive my proper dodgy pronunciation, but something like Argentoy, now an area in Paris, but at one point must have been a little bit more leafy because it was well known for its asparagus. This one here is a purple variety from Italy. This is Violetta d'Albenga. So Albenga is in Liguria in northern Italy. And this one we've grown before. The other one we haven't. That's new for us. This one we've grown for many years. And it produces really nice, quite chunky purple spears. Very tasty. And for us, suitably productive. This is not a business, so I don't really care how much it produces. I mean, we don't get me wrong, if we had an acre of this, I'm sure we'd still eat all of the asparagus. We're very keen on it, but I'm more keen on getting an interesting plant than I am on the yield. But because it's got berries, it gives me a chance to fix a little problem. So the other variety, getting hold of crowns of those is really difficult. But getting hold of seed, that's pretty easy. That's widely available. For this one from Albanga, I haven't seen seed available. It must be somewhere, but I haven't found it. And it's, you know, it's, just, it's not a very common variety. The crowns, though, are fairly easy to get hold of. And like the others, they went in at the same time, but there are one or two that didn't develop properly. There are one or two that sent up a very weak shoot and then died out. And I think there might be one or two positions here where the crown is, it's there, but it's not that impressive. And probably this year, those that have survived, they will develop okay. But I think I'm gonna be left with maybe two or three spots out of the, the 40 here with no crown and I'd like to fix that. And because this produces seed, I'm gonna have a go at sowing some. So here they are, these are the asparagus berries. And well, they're quite attractive in the autumn. The birds don't appear to like them, they've left them alone, which is a little bit surprising. But I'm gonna take a few of these and see 
if these are viable. I have sown asparagus from seed before, but never from berries I've collected. So I might have to look into this a little bit and see if there are any tricks. But before I hook these plants out, I'm definitely going to take a few of these berries. I think I'll pick some of the larger ones, ignore the smaller ones. And I only need a few plants, so they don't have to be that successful, really. Of course, it takes a few years for the uh, plants to become established and so you can take a harvest. And these will be effectively two years behind the main plants here. These, these crowns would have been at least one year old when they went in, probably closer to 18 months, actually. They were big crowns. Um, and they've had one year to get established here. So these are, these are really going to be a long way behind but better that than an empty space. Well, I'm sure that is plenty. I'll probably pick up a few more before I'm done. So I probably need maybe three plants for that bed to fill in the, the holes. It's not a big deal. Those, those crowns will spread out if I didn't do it, it would be okay, but it kind of offends my slight OCD tendencies. OCD in a kitchen garden, they do not go together very well because <laughs> it's far too much work here to be able to keep it all neat and tidy. But never mind, I would still like to fill in those gaps if I can. The other bed also has at least one gap and I, I shall wait until the spears start to come up in the spring. Um, but I'm pretty sure I need at least one plant to put in there. But the seed is readily available of that. And in fact, I had a packet of seed before I managed to get hold of the crowns. So last year, late spring, I did make a sowing of the asparagus. And I've got some plants here in the greenhouse. And these don't know it's winter. They haven't really stopped. I mean, they've, they've, they've thrown up some growth and some of the individual stems, they died back, but it's just kept producing new growth. So, I mean, this is a pretty small pot for asparagus. It's gonna be pretty crammed in there, but I don't care too much. It's a young plant. So long as I move this on in the spring, it'll be fine. And, and you can see there are new spears coming up all the time. I've got, uh, what have I got? I've got seven of these. I only really need one or two, so I've got plenty to choose from. And I shall use these to fill in any holes. With a bit of luck, some of those berries that I picked will do the same. I suppose there's potential for some crossing between the two. I hope not, but it doesn't really matter so much. Not here. If I get some weird and wonderful asparagus crowns. I'm not that bothered. Um, it'll just be nice to fill in that row. Right, it's time I stopped waffling and got on with some work. So with these, I just want to cut at or just below ground level, not too deep. Not a bad cluster of stems actually for a first year. These grew pretty well. They might not be as productive as a as a modern variety, but they're not bad all the same. And they are very tasty. I just like the fact that this variety has been grown for hundreds of years it's quite particular to that location that always makes it a little bit more interesting for me I've got the hori hori here I should tackle some of the nettle with that get the root out but where possible I'm just going to pick these out the soil's nice and soft here at the moment we've had a lot of rain 
but I don't want to go rooting around here where the crowns are. That would not be sensible. This year I should probably put something a little bit more effective for support than a couple of loose strings. That's not very good either. But that's it. That's today's job. Weed this out and then I shall give it a hefty mulch of organic matter. And it will be good pretty much then for the rest of the year. That organic matter will help keep further weed down. Well, it's some months since this was last weeded, so although there's plenty here, it's not that bad. And there's not too much small stuff. We seem to have a few larger specimens getting a grip there. But the nice thing is they're, they're quick and easy to take out, and I think that mulch will help keep this um, low maintenance, I think, through the at least until the summer. So that's the old plants cleared, plenty of the berries saved, and all of the weeds taken care of. Now all I need to do is spread a pretty thick layer of organic matter. Now our soil here is fairly sandy. That's ideal for asparagus. It's got rather too much stone for it, however. Um, we have sieved some of the soil here, so there's less of the larger stones at least, but a sandy soil is great for this crop except of course it's pretty hungry and without the large amounts of organic matter it becomes pretty light and insubstantial so i want to get plenty of mulch on this and that's also going to help suppress further weed growth we're just sort of getting on top of this bed now of course when you turn it over and trench this out for planting you bring all those old weed seeds to the surface so it's been hard work. This last season, I think, it's going to be a lot less work this year. Well, I thought we'd piled up plenty of organic matter there, but it's really surprising how much it does take to cover a bed this size. I don't have enough of my own compost for this yet. We lost our big old compost bins about a year ago when we renovated the garden and we haven't produced nearly enough yet to cover this bed. So I'm using some good horse compost. This is a fairly locally produced and it's one we've never had any problems with in the past. So I'm quite happy to use it, but it's that good bulky organic matter that is ideal for this kind of soil. It's no good putting some lightweight wishy-washy stuff on here, it just won't have the impact it needs. But this stuff is good and solid, the worms will go nuts for this. We actually have a pretty healthy soil here when we're putting this sort of organic matter on. Without it, it'd be dry and horrible. But one more bag to do the trick. So that's it for the asparagus. These will be happy until, well, at least late spring. And it will be interesting to see just how many of them do come up this year. I think there should only be a few holes and I will get those seeds set later on in the year to replace them. And in fact, our previous patch, well, that would self seed all over the place. There will always be little asparagus plants coming up out of the row. So. I'm sure at least some of those seeds will develop. So I should be engaged with sowing pretty soon. The traditional time for onions has already passed. Depending who you ask, some will say the 21st of December. Others will say Boxing Day. Both of those are traditional times for getting those started. And it is important to give them 
a good start because the more top growth they've got the better the bulbs will be later in the year but I never get them going quite that early and I think any time at least during January should be absolutely fine so I'll get those started pretty soon but that is all for this video thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now <laughs>